Just about the front door like a ghost in I want to welcome you to the meeting tonight. This is one of the community meetings that we hold throughout the community. My name is Jan McClintock. I'm the general manager for Mount House Community Services. wonderful community and I look forward to a long time and great things with the community. So without further ado, since we're running a little bit late, I'm going to introduce our board president, Celeste Ferrin, and Good evening. Uh, we welcome you, Jan. This is your first community meeting. We are very pleased to have you here with us and the work you've done so far. Uh, it's fabulous. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Can I have a show of hands for anyone that this is your very first meeting? Welcome to Mountain House. Thank you very much for coming. Um, the rest of us hope that you love it here as much as we do. Your roots go down quick. There's like some sort of human miracle grow in Mountain House where you feel right at home right away. Um, we're very well connected in this community. For example, <laughs> Uh, right now, there's a family that has a contract on, on a house in Mountain House, and they have not yet moved here to Mountain House, and it was discovered that their little three-year-old girl has cancer, and this community has rallied behind this family, looking to auction things off and, and collect and donate to the, uh, an auction going on this weekend. Um, could you stand up for a minute, Scarlett, please? If, if anyone has anything that they would like to contribute to this family who has not yet moved here, please see Scarlett afterwards. She and um, her friend sitting next to her are organizing an auction this weekend. But um, I bring that up, um, and David Palmo, yes, he as well. There are several people that have just jumped on that back bandwagon. And I bring that up to really to demonstrate what a community we are. I'm really proud of the community that we are and the people that we are, um, including um, and I know that the school district is going to go there, but Dale Hansen, could you please stand for a moment? This is our school superintendent. This is probably his true And um, I'm sure the school district is going to, probably not, you're going to speak to, to uh, on behalf of the school board tonight, as well as Dale, I'm not sure. But I would like to point out that Dale has been a great asset to our community not only for our schools, our school district is fabulous. You look at our numbers, you look at our teachers. Um, and the thing that I would like to point out is that the contributions that you've made to our community, Dale, go beyond the school district because when we shop for homes in a new place, we have a lot of young families here. And the first thing that young families look at are the school test scores. And under your direction, our two school test scores have been high. So if there are other ramifications than other other than just in the community. So your home price is going up. The com one of the contributions is because of the direction that Dale Hanson has taken the school district in. Thank you very much, Dale. We will miss you. <laughs> also on the agenda tonight, um, the Sheriff's Department has a spot on the agenda. Not listed on the agenda is Steve Moore, who, who is here. Could you stand for a moment, Steve? This is our county sheriff. to, uh, he graciously accepted yesterday to be our Grand Marshal in our 4th of July parade this uh, 4th of July. And uh, Angel, could you stand for a moment, please? Angel is coordinating the 4th of July event. We are still looking for volunteers. If you would like to get involved with your community, please see Angel to uh, donate some of your valuable time. Um, it's fun to get involved and be involved with your community. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Angel. I won't, be, I won't take too much more of your time, but the last thing I would like to say um, is could, could all the CSD employees stand for a moment, please? I would like to recognize you. I'd like to ask my husband to sit down. He is tall, but... Could you just go around the room and say your names, please, and what departments you work for? Starting with you, Marie. Marie Mitchell. That was Lorraine Salazar, District Secretary. Morning, Hoover, uh, Community Services. 
And um, what I would like to ask you as residents is, before you leave tonight, find one of these residents, these employees, to thank them for their service. Um, I'm a firm believer that Mountain House is a great place to live, and it's just a great place in general, aesthetically, schools, everything. And I'm a firm believer that we can't be a great place unless it's also a great place to live. So please let our employees know that you appreciate them. Um, one last thing, there are seven days of school left. If you have children in school, our school district scores also would not be great without the teachers that we have. Please take a moment to thank the teachers before the school year is up. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. And for those of you who are new to the community, there's a kite festival coming up on the 8th. And it's really kind of a cool thing. It's very unique. So mark that on your calendars and check out the main park for uh, the kite festival coming up. And next I'm going to represent, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Gary Frost. He is the representative for U.S. House of Representatives Jerry McNerney, 9th District. That is our district. And he is here to talk to you about the Good evening, my name is Gary Prost. Uh, I do work for Congressman Jerry McNerney here in uh, the 9th Congressional District of California. I'm not really here to talk to you about Jerry McNerney. Uh, I don't think he'd want me to do that. The, uh, the reason I'm here tonight is we were given an opportunity to speak and uh, we've had some issues coming up with one of the things that we spend an awful lot of our time doing uh, and that's casework for constituents. So. Uh, and this touches just about everybody's life. Uh, the, uh, if you, Medicare, Social Security, there's uh, just so many things that uh, people depend on uh, federal agencies for. We facilitate that communication when, when it breaks down sometimes. So, and of course, we all know that it breaks down once in a while. So, uh, the source of that uh, provision of uh, constituent services is uh, congressional oversight of federal agencies. Congress basically funds the government. Uh, and with that, with that funding comes parameters that Congress sets on, that, on what the money is to be used for and how it's to be spent. And so uh, we are tasked with uh, assuring that the agencies are working properly and the money is spent properly by federal agencies. Uh, one thing that I have to, to state and make clear, because this comes up a lot, the constituents that we help must live in our district. We do get calls from outside the district from constituents. Uh, we're not really permitted to help them by congressional rules, and I think also possibly by federal regulations. Uh, so if you live in uh, San Joaquin County, and you're north basically of I-5, all of Mountain House is in our district, uh, then we can represent you, uh, I-205, right? Uh, the, uh, we also have East Contra Costa, Byron, uh, Discovery Bay, Brentwood, uh, Antioch, Oakley, uh, Bethel Island, we've acquired in the Innocence Redistricting. We also have golf. Uh, the types of services that we provide, uh, we have, uh, we can do flag requests, a, more, a little bit more on that later. Uh, certificates and letters, tour requests, if you're going to DC, we can help you with that. And uh, checking on the status, and this is the primary thing we're here to talk about, uh, checking on the status of an application uh, or a petition submitted to a federal agency. And we also do service academy nominations. And I had a great experience last night. I got to go, I, I managed the congressman's uh, service academy nominations. We're talking about West Point, Annapolis, Air Force Academy, and Virtual Marine Academy uh, that we nominate to. There's also the Coast Guard Academy, but we don't nominate to them take direct applications based on merit. Uh, what we cannot do, what we can never do, is intervene in judicial proceeding. Uh, we can't write a letter to a judge or anyone involved in a court case. We can't communicate with law enforcement or a prosecutor regarding a case. Uh, we can't act as a law enforcement agency. That's Sheriff, Sheriff Moore's job. Uh, and nor can we intervene in state or local agencies. Where the federal government, there is a separation. It's not one over the other. They exist in parallel with some overlap. Uh, so for flag requests, we can supply a flag flown over the Capitol for very special events. 
such as a funeral for a veteran, the retirement uh, of an officer, or uh, other auspicious occasions. Uh, we also sell flags. Uh, they may be purchased through our office. Uh, you can find the information online on our website. It's mcnerdy.house.gov. Uh, they're high quality, uh, reasonably priced, and I, I mean that sincerely, they're very reasonably priced. And uh, they're made in the United States. It's maybe one of the few places you can still buy a flag, a U.S. flag, it doesn't say made in China. Uh, now, D.C. tours, that goes mainly through our D.C. office. For White House tours, which are not going on right now for, because of sequestration, uh, but for White House tours, we need six months advance notice because they want to put people through that, uh, you know, cursory background check. And there is backlog, as you can well imagine. Uh, but uh, other tours are available. The Capitol, uh, Bureau of Engraving, see where your money's printed. Uh, the uh, uh, Supreme Court, uh, there are other places in D.C. we can help uh, arrange tourism. So we do, uh, we like to get as much advance notice of that as possible. So when you're booking your flight, if you're booking your flight early to get the good fares, let us know. And yeah, we'll try to set things up for you. Uh, certificates. These are certificates of special congressional recognition. They're to recognize uh, and commemorate special events. Uh, uh, noteworthy achievements by people if you are being awarded something, if you've earned an award, if you've, uh, uh, if you've uh, uh, made a, a, a significant accomplishment, uh, we can recognize that, we'd like to recognize that with a certificate. Uh, uh, the Service Academy nominations, and I, I really try to push this as much as I can. We're here at a school and uh, the best time to start on, on those, if you have a child who is interested in attending one of our service academies, the best time to start thinking about that is in your freshman year, because there's a lot you have to do to prepare. There's a lot of coursework that the academies look for. There's sports, athletics, there's community involvement, uh, all the things. In fact, if you're applying to the academies, uh, you want to go to the website and take a look. But, uh, you'll find that the things that they're looking for are pretty much the same things that Harvard and Princeton and Cal and Michigan and the top tier universities in the United States are looking for. So it takes a lot of preparation. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in that, if, you're, if your son or daughter is interested in that, contact our office. As I said, I got to go recognize one of our nominees last night at Brentwood at, uh, at, uh, at Liberty High who received an appointment of the Merchant Marine Academy. And it was fantastic. They do a big thing, uh, scholarship night, they had hundreds of people in the uh, in the room, in the auditorium, and uh, instead of giving him a scholarship, I got to tell him this is more than a scholarship, this is a four-year, full-ride, room and board education, it will end with a, uh, a bachelor's degree, he will uh, learn how to tear down a ship's engine and put it back together, he will learn how to make the parts for that engine if he has to. And then he'll, he'll spend a year at sea while he's at the school, breaking up, broken up in three, four month chunks. And then he's going to get to uh, choose between a career as a military officer or a career as a reserve officer and working in America's maritime industry because the, uh, the, the academy is run by the uh, Department of Transportation. And the same is basically true of the DOD academies, except you have to do active duty in the military after you're done with that. But, uh, I really want to make sure people are aware of that uh, so that you can uh, take advantage of it. So I didn't want to take up too much of your time tonight. I know you've got other speakers. So thank you very much for the opportunity. We're going to switch to one of the other branches of government. We're going to switch to the state. As we've just heard, there's a difference in the jurisdiction between the state and the feds. So Tony Wong is here to represent Assemblymember Susan Eggman. We are in the 13th District. We are her district. And Tony, Thank you very much, Jan. There, there's not a lot that I have left to say after Gary so eloquently explained, you know, the, the differences between uh, the different uh, levels of government from city to county, to state and federal, um, and that, that we have a division. Um, 
there's not much more to say except that we don't do service academies. I mean, we do everything that Gary talked about. Um, the <clears throat> certificates to honor individuals. We also do, though, that we, as a staff, and that the assembly member takes a great deal of pride in is constituent casework. Uh, the assembly member herself uh, is a trained social worker, and she believes in trying to assist as many people as possible. And in the case of our office, what we try to do is interact on behalf of our constituents with state agencies, when the state agencies can vary a great deal. Um, specifically, we were here, I was here, um, uh, at the last community meeting in February over at uh, Cuesta Elementary School, and a few constituents from, from Mountain House who, I was looking for them, they're not here tonight, but they came up to me afterwards and said, I, I need some assistance with Caltrans, I need some assistance with EDD. And I was able to take down that information and we were able to contact uh, Caltrans and contact EDD and get them the information or, or, or try and clear up the backlog that they have. So one of the services that our office, I think, that's most importantly provides is interaction with state agencies, which, you know, we have a very large state, 37 million people, and our state agencies are, you know, unfortunately a little bit underfunded and has, there's a backlog in a lot of things from uh, business licenses to uh, unemployment insurance checks to driver's license renewals, and so we try to do our very best to assist. Uh, just a couple things that I'd like to point out for the, that the assembly member uh, is trying to do is we, we're, we're relatively new to Mountain House and to this district. The assembly member was only elected uh, earlier this year. And so we're trying to reach out to the community as much as possible. So I brought with me some Let's Talk brochures. If there's an issue, whether it be state or any other issue that, that you would like to talk about or you know someone that they'd like to talk about, please take one of these, fill it out, send it in to us, and we'd be happy to talk to you on the telephone or come out and meet with you, whatever, whatever is necessary. The other thing I want to talk about is that uh, I certainly understand and appreciate after having uh, attended a meeting between the assembly member and, and Superintendent Dale Hansen, how important that education is here to the folks in Mountain House. Um, and so one of those things that we wanted to let everyone know that to help students here at Mountain House advance their education, specifically uh, juniors and seniors and college age students is that we have a California State Assembly internship program. Now it's an unpaid internship program, but it's an internship program to learn about what we do at the state level and also what the assembly member does at the state level. And it's a summer program. Now slots, some slots have already been filled, but there are still some open. And I brought some applications with me. And if, I, if, uh, if you'd like to pick some up, please stop by. If you have any other questions in general regarding the state of California or anything that we can do, certainly please stop by the table. something out. I thought Tony might mention this, but uh, Susan Eggman, our representative, sets up office once a month in our CSD building, and uh, there was an overlap in communication last time, but we will get the word out the next time that she sets up, up office, and she comes or sends her rep. She, try, she will try to come herself out of it sometime, but um, it's a good time when, when you have issues that you would like your representative to vote a specific way or to talk about those issues and where you would like to see them go. It's a good time to come out and meet with your representative. We are talking to other representatives about setting up office after we saw Susan Aikman's doing, uh, doing that, and it looks like Jerry McMurray may be doing that too, and um, his representative can talk to that when he comes up. And speaking of that, our next speaker is representing our county board of supervisors, uh, Mr. Bob Elliott, in the 5th district, and Scott Torrell is representing him, and I do believe that representative, our supervisor Elliott, has also set some office hours over at our main district office, so that he will be able to talk to you there too. Good evening, Mountain House. Um, I am struggling with a cough, so hopefully I'll be able to get through a couple of issues here without breaking into a cough. Uh, I am here, and uh, I'm happy to be here on behalf of uh, Supervisor Elliott. Uh, fortunately, he, uh, regrettably, is in Sacramento again for CSAC, and they're having their board of directors meeting legislative conference uh, both tonight and tomorrow. So he's again stuck in Sacramento. Um, one of the items that they are uh, covering and dealing with is that the governor's May budget revise and how it will affect all of us because it, it could potentially have an effect on every single one of us. 
Uh, the governor's budget revised is proposing to take back state monies that are known as 1991 realignment funds dedicated for the care of our indigent. And the governor believes under the Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare, uh, the expansion of Medi-Cal scheduled to happen in January 2014 and the commercial exchange scheduled to be operational October 2013, counties will no longer need this money, the, real, the 1991 realignment funds to care for our indigent. However, after the ACA, Affordable Care Act, uh, goes into effect, it is estimated that it will leave two to three million Californians still without health care. <clears throat> The, uh, the counties will still be expected to care for these folks, uh, but will have no funding to do so under the governor's uh, revised budget. Um, so one might ask, uh, how does this affect me? And uh, if you have health care from an employer, why would you think that this would affect you? Well, the county already uses general funds to cover losses of anywhere from 10 to 15 million a year, and has been doing so for several years now. Uh, for the county hospital. And those, those funds come in, again, out of our general funds, and when those funds get used at the county hospital, they don't get used at, in other departments, uh, such as uh, the sheriff's department or uh, other uh, behavioral health. Um, there's a lot of different things that the county covers, and when funds are being directed, that, those kinds of numbers, so 10 to 15 million a year, for one department, it really, uh, there's really a suffering in other departments. The, uh, <clears throat> so, again, these, these dollars can be used for a number of other, other services if, if we had those dollars back. Uh, once, I'm going to go ahead and call it Obamacare because everybody does, is fully implemented, those who will then uh, either have in Medi-Cal or insurance through the commercial exchange, uh, they can go, now go to any hospital. So, a lot of these folks that would have normally been going to the county hospital can go to Lodi Memorial, Dameron Hospital, St. Joseph's, Sutter, Tracy. Um, and what that leaves our county hospital with is only the indigent will use our county hospital. And they have no means to pay. So if those 19, 1991 realignment funds are going, are, are going to be taken away from the county, we're going to have to pick up any, the general fund are going to have to pick up the, the tab for the indigent who will have no care, health care. Um, so that could raise significantly the amount of money that uh, the general fund has to cover for the county hospital. So this is a huge issue that's being discussed uh, right now in Sacramento. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Assemblyman Amen's office is, is well in, involved in this, this whole thing. Uh, so it will, those, those uh, costs will further drain the county's general fund and result in further reduced services to other departments. Um, it's, this issue is more complex than I, know I have time to explain to you here or even I have the knowledge to explain to you here. It is pretty, pretty complex. Um, if you want to learn more about it, just to get a general understanding, you can go to CSAC's website, which is www.csac. Dot counties, that's C O U N T I E S, at, dot org. Um, and there is actually a petition there that you can sign on to uh, to urge the governor not to take back these funds um, if you feel that this is an important issue for you. Um, I truly believe, and Supervisor uh, Elliott uh, truly believes, that it is important for all of us to be involved in this issue because it will affect the entire county and the budget overall will affect the, all the services that the county is able to provide for all of us, uh, whether it be animal control or on down the road, um, uh, airport. Uh, so anyhow, um, I, uh, am, I am going to stay as long as I can, as long as I don't break into a cough. <laughs> I'm sure nobody wants me to be around if I'm coughing, but uh, I'd be happy to talk with anybody about that issue. Um, I also did want to uh, uh, let you know that uh, next Tuesday at the board, the board will be discussing the expansion of the jail. And this is a very important issue because uh, the potential expansion of the jail will help us avoid uh, continued early release of inmates due to overcrowding. 
Uh, you can watch the discussion uh, live on webcast at the county website, which is www.sjgov.org. Uh, I do have one announcement, which, which um, Mrs. McClintock had already uh, covered, is that the supervisor, or the CSD, had graciously offered to host the supervisor to be here and spend some time with you all. He feels bad that he has uh, missed two of these community meetings in a row, so he would like to spend some time in the evening, anywhere uh, from 5 to 8, uh, on June 19th uh, at the county CSD, I mean the <laughs> county CSD, at the Mountain House CSD. Um, so uh, hopefully you all will be able to come by, say hello, and introduce yourself, ask them any questions about any concerns, uh, county, county issues that you, you may have. And uh, I did have one last thing that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, at the last meeting, somebody asked me about uh, what was going on with the intersection of Byron Road and Grant Line Road. And I uh, just wanted to pass on to you that the, uh, the work is going to begin, it's scheduled to begin in August. So that's all I have to share tonight. Thank you very much for your time. I'm surprised you can get standing ovation on that one. Uh, one thing before we go on to our next speaker, um, down or in, in the back of the room on the elected officials table, uh, Jerry McNerney's part of the table has some information if you're interested, um, various different information that might be applicable to you. So feel free to stop and, and check that out. Oh, man.